1981. And in the southwest part of Houston, we are at the magnificent Astrodome, the granddaddy of all domes. And tonight, before a marvelous crowd, Top Rank Incorporated presents the welterweight Astro Wars. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bill Mazur. You can hear the roar of the crowd in the background. We've already had a fight in which Milton McCrory won a sensational knockout in the eighth round, and we have a full night of marvelous fights for you. And with me here in the surprisingly large gathered auditorium, the pride and joy of ESPN, Sal Marciano. Sal? Bill, a pleasure to be with you. And we know they do things big in Texas here tonight in the Houston Astrodome. We have the two current welterweight champions, the former welterweight champion, the current junior middleweight champion, and an 18-year-old who's expected to be the junior middleweight champion before he's 19 years old. I'm talking about Tony Ayala Jr. of San Antonio. He has just come into the ring, and I'm going to get ready for that bout right now. Okay. Standing with me, you know this man. I don't have to introduce him to you. The bald head, the man who is the only unified champion in the world. Mr. Marvin Hagler, the middleweight champion of the world. Marvin. Oh, I tell you, it's a pleasure being here with Sal and yourself, Bill. I tell you, you can feel the tension in the air right now. Everybody's really excited about the Walter Waite and the junior middleweight title fight here tonight. I think you're going to see some, some tremendous, tremendous fights tonight. I tell you what, Marvin, you grab your seat. I'm going to throw it over to Sal, and we are ready to go with our first bout of the night. Salvatore. Thank you, Bill. You're looking at the ring here in the Houston Astrodome, and in it is Tony Ayala Jr., a much-talked-about teenage junior middleweight. And tonight he's taking on Jerry Cheatham of Phoenix, Arizona. We're just uh, moments away. You're looking at Cheatham right there. He's 22 years old with an impressive record of 31 victories, five defeats, and two draws. In those 31 victories, 21 knockouts. And get this, in his five defeats, all of them by split decision. So it's obvious that Jerry Cheatham is a winner, also very much in all of his fights. Tony Ayala Jr. with a record of 11-0, 10 knockouts. Nine of those knockouts in three rounds or less. He became 18 years old last February. And as you look at him, you can see his calm demeanor, his poise. He is beyond his years. When you meet Tony, he seems like someone 10 years older than himself. That you told me uh, there's something very interesting today. There's a younger brother who's how old? Sammy, uh, I believe, is... Uh, now, you were telling me about the 13-year-old. The 13-year-old. Yes, Paolo, 13, has already had 70 amateur fights, and in those 70 amateur fights, only two defeats. So if you're a member of the Ayala family, you better be able to fight the old can. We'll cue you in on uh, the history of the Ayala family as Tony Sr. is in the background. Uh, he has uh, brought up a fighting family. He is a coach of amateur boxes in uh, Texas, has his own gym. And, of course, this is his pride and joy, Torito, the baby bull, Tony Ayala Jr. He has been a professional a year and one week. And in that time, he has racked up 11 straight wins. And boxing experts say you're looking at a future champion because of his punching power and his natural savvy in the ring, which came because he started fighting when he was 8 years old. Marvin, have you have been able to see Tony in action uh, in live or on the screen? Yes, I uh, see Tony down in Syracuse, and I tell you, I think you're right, absolutely right, that uh, he will be a future champion. He looks very good. Uh, I think that he's going along real right. Uh, his father's an excellent trainer, and uh, I think you're going to see him look great here tonight. So we're all set to go. Let's go to the ring announcer, Dick Eason. All right, your attention to the ring, please, ladies and gentlemen. Introducing junior middleweight for 10 rounds or less. On my left, fighting out of the blue corner from San Antonio, Texas, weighing in at 154 and three-quarter pounds. Let's welcome the talented Texan, Tony El Torito Ayala! And on my right, ladies and 
and gentlemen, in the red corner, from Phoenix, Arizona, at 153 and one half pounds, let's welcome the exciting Jerry Cheatham. Your referee for this event, Chris Jordan. And no rabbit punching, I do not. Referee Chris Jordan brings the both fighters to the center of the ring for their final instructions here in Texas. The scoring is done by the 10 point must system, and the referee is involved in the scoring. And yes, there is a three knockdown rule. Ayala in the black trunks, Keenum in the black trunks with the red stripe. Round one, scheduled for 10. Jerry Cheatham in the black trunks with the uh, red trim. Tony Ayala Jr. in the black trunks. Ayala began his career with four straight first round knockouts. Takes a right hand from Cheatham. Two fights ago, Ayala had his biggest test as a professional. Mario Maldonado in Syracuse last March caught Ayala with a right hand halfway through the first round. Tony says he wasn't warmed up properly. He was rushed into the ring that night. And he scores with a left hook and sends Keaton back three steps. Ayala says he wasn't warmed up, took a right hand, went down, got up at the count of five, winked at his father, and then demolished Maldonado, knocking him out two rounds later in the third. That left hand was blocked by Cheetah. A left uppercut by Cheatham caught Ayala on the chin. Right hand lead followed by a left by Ayala came back to the right cross. This is the familiar style of Tony Ayala. He is uh, a quiet fighter, very little flash, squares and meets his opponent full and likes to work the body early in the fight. Left hand by Ayala. Another left hand by Ayala and a right cross by Tony. Beat him backing up, takes a right hand. Sal, I believe the way how he looks right now that this fight won't last long. He like he's really warming up, and that's a uniform in the first round to come out this strong. He really wants in this fight quick, I believe. Notice too that Ayala has his hands high. For a young fighter, he doesn't seem to have any weaknesses. No, he moves in. He's very trained, very well, and uh, he's just taking his time. And what I like about him, he puts his punches together. Keenum, too, seems to be carrying his left hand low. Yeah, that's true, but uh, that's vulnerable for that right hand there, and I think that Tony kind of know that when he gets him closer to the rope, he shoots that right hand at him. Coming up to 30 seconds left in the opening round, scheduled for 10 between Tony Ayala Jr. in the black trunks, Jerry Cheatham in the black trunks with the red trim. Hook by Ayala, that caught Cheatham on the right side of his face. Couple of left hand jabs by Ayala. Ayala digs that right hand to the body. Right hand lead by Ayala caught Cheatham as he was backpedaling. Another right hand by Ayala. And so the first three minutes belong to Tony Ayala, who gives Cheatham a pat on the uh, rear as he goes back to his corner. I got a feeling that this young man may be challenging even you in a couple of years. The thing about him that impresses you is he's so well schooled. Omar doesn't waste punches, shoots the right hand when the chance is there. And I got to tell you, he really bangs to the body. Oh, he's a very good body puncher, and you can see that he trained very well for this fight. This uh, Jerry Chatham, Cheatham, he seems like he's a very game fighter. He's not giving up, but like I said, but Tony's going, to, Tony's going to be using that right hand more. You're looking at Thomas Hearns in his dressing room as he warms up for his fight, taking on Pablo Baez later in the evening. The WBA welterweight champion getting warmed up. Ready for round two between Ayala and Cheatham. Ayala looking very sharp in that first round. Cheatham doing very little offensively in the first three minutes. And notice the lack of work for the referee, Chris Jordan. Very few uh, clinches in that first round. 
Ayala in the solid black trunks continues to stalk Cheatham. Cheatham working the body a bit. Ayala hardly moves. Left hook by Ayala. We were telling you earlier how poised Ayala is. He drove a car when he was 12 years old. He said he didn't hang around with kids much. He said he was grown up right away. Well, now, Carl, go ahead, Mark. Well, you can see right now who's the stronger puncher out of the both of the fighters. And Ayala looks very strong in there. I think it's just a matter of time before he puts this guy away. Ayala with a right-hand lead that rocked Cheatham. took by Ayala was behind the head of Cheetah. Made a lot of noise, but uh, no connection. There's a the left hand by Ayala. Now Ayala working the body of Jerry right Cheetah. Right Marvin, uh, it seems to me that Cheetah should be showing more movement instead of trying to slug with Tony. Yes, he should, Sal. You know, he's got a beautiful jab there, and he's not using it, and he can see the way how Ayala wants him right on the rope, so he can pop that Right hand right in at him. Now the right hand by Ayala, followed by a left uppercut. Cheatham comes back with a soft left hand. Ayala's got Cheatham on the ropes. It's like having a, an eight-ounce steak for dinner. That's what Tony likes. He's in there with the wrong man right now to be laying against that rope. A little bit of a grudge fight, too, Marvin, because... Uh, uh, Cheatham accused Ayala of dodging him, and Tony says that's not true at all. He said, I'll fight anybody, and tonight I, I've got a little extra edge against Cheatham because he said that. Well, he's going to have to back up his words in there tonight, that's for sure. Thirty seconds left in the second round. Right hand by Ayala caught Cheatham on the left side of his face, but Cheatham is still bouncing. Seems like you can't understand to me how uh, how Ayala is still getting over with him with the right hand there. He looks very puzzled as Cheatham. You can't understand what's happening. How that right hand, how come I'm getting hit with that right hand all the time? The reason why, he's carrying that left very low. And Ayala is showing us the full arsenal, uh, an effective jab, the strong right hand, using body work. Heads back to his corner where he's greeted by uh, Lou Duba and uh, his father, Tony Sr. End of round two. So far, it's been all of Tony. Mr. Ayala, a 46-year-old uh, Texan of Mexican descent, a boxing instructor who has uh, produced seven national amateur champions, three of them his sons. You know, uh, Sam, I'm too young, of course, to have seen old-time fighters. I'm talking about Stanley Ketchum. But this kid fights like a fighter in the 50s. He maneuvers himself well. I'm talking about Ayala. You're looking at Cheatham, who doesn't seem, as Marvin Hagler has pointed out, to have the firepower. He's making a mistake of lining himself to get Tony to be taking the center of the ring. The only thing Ayala, and I'm sure Marvin has noticed this, he occasionally drops the left hand low and is vulnerable to a right hand counter, which is what Maldonado did. But he's a terrific looking prospect. Round three, scheduled for 10. Tony Ayala in the solid black trunks. That's Jerry Cheatham in the black with the red trim. Ayala, 18 years old, undefeated, 11 and 0, 10 knockouts. Cheatham is 31, 5 and 2, with 21 knockouts. Cheatham now trying to get something going, more aggressive here in the third than he'd been in the first two rounds. I believe that he's fighting the wrong fight right now, Bill. He's because, uh, him a little, Marvin. Oh. Well, you've seen when uh, a yellow went back to a corner, he looked very confident that he's, uh, he know that he's got this guy. Looks like he wants to draw Cheetah in. Once again, notice Cheetah's uh, left hand, kind of low. Four years ago, Ayala sparred with Pepino Cuevas, and they say that sixth round workout was a war. The 14-year-old gave Cuevas all he wanted. Of course, Cuevas, later in our program, 
coming back from his uh, defeat to Thomas Hearns when he lost his championship, taking on Jorgen Hansen, the European welterweight champion. That's scheduled for later in our program. Coming up to the halfway mark of the third round. In the center of the ring now, both fighters have slowed down considerably here in the third. Cheatham just took a left hook. Come in, baby. Under and over. Double it, double it. Marvin, is the possibility here that Tony's getting a little too cute here? He's maybe trying to box too much with Cheatham? No, he knows what he has in front of him right now, and I think that he's uh, letting him unload right now and starting to counter punch him. He's looking for a clean shot. He's looking for a mistake by Cheetah. And I believe that's what he wants. And uh, Cheetah's going to make a mistake, I believe. Ayello's trying to make him fight his fight. A couple of junior middleweights under the dome in Houston. Right hand lead by Ayala caught Cheetah. Less than 30 seconds to go in round three. Right hand by Ayala. Marvin, uh, not too much action here in the third. I think that uh, this, the round is not over yet. If you got 13 seconds still to go. If uh, Chatham still makes that mistake, it could cost him. Of course, our opinions are unofficial, but uh, how do you score the first three? I'm giving it all to Tony Ayello right now. I agree. How about you, Bill? I feel the same way. Uh, I, I have to tell you guys, working in one corner as we are, we happen to be in Ayala's corner. You're looking at Cheatham as we are across the way. We are in Ayala's corner, and you can hear Louis Duba, who's a chorus leader, start the cheers, double up, hook him. And in the previous fight as we will in the ensuing fight. We'll have Cuevas in this corner. We'll have Sugar Ray Leonard in this corner and Thomas Hearns in this corner. We'll see if the blue corner is the lucky corner tonight. You're looking at the corner of uh, Tony Ayala Jr. Let's listen in. You heard the voice of Lou Duba, and just as we cut in, he was telling Tony to use his jab a lot more. And as I remember now, in that third round, Tony didn't jab too much. This is round four. Yes, Marvin. I think that he's saying the right thing because a fighter can't protect his body and his head at the same time. So whatever his hands are going to be on the body, he's going to go to the head. If his head is protecting his body, then he's going to, he's going to, if he's using his head, then he's going to protect the, get the body. If you just joined us, you're listening to the voice of Marvin Hagler, the undisputed middleweight champion of the world, working with Bill Mazur at ringside here in Houston. Round four scheduled for 10 between these two junior middleweights, and that's Tony Ayala in the black trunks, Jerry Cheatham in the black trunks with the red trim. Bill, if I was, if I was uh, Tony Ayala right now, I would keep the pressure right on Jerry uh, Cheatham and make him fight my fight. That's what he's got to do. Another strong left took by Ayala. And now Ayala is not laying back as he was in the third. He's moving ever forward, stalking Cheetah. Ayala using his jab a lot more here in round four. Jerry should be boxing and staying to the outside there, Bill, I believe. Another left hook by Ayala. But you have to give him a lot of credit. He is a game kid. Now there's a trickle of blood coming out from the, the mouth of Cheatham. A right hand lead by Ayala. Snap Cheatham's head back. Come on, Tony, get that pressure. Put that pressure on. Get off. Left hook by Cheatham. His glove bounced off Ayala's head. No damage. Bill, I believe that Ayala put more power in his punches right now. I'm telling you, though, Marvin, he's done a lot of threat. A lot of threat. He's a very game fighter. 
you just gotta, can't let a guy like Ayala get set. You got to keep moving, and that's the mistake Cheatham is making. Well, he was just bouncing his legs there a little bit. I think that he knows that he has to move. Keep that uh, jab out there uh, to keep Antonio Yellow off of him. But uh, the toy bull won't let him. Notice Ayala. Right on top of him. Ayala working the body of Cheatham on uh, both sides, and that is usually what how you knock down a tree. And that's how uh, Ayala fights. He likes to work the body of his opponent, wear him down. Cheatham is closing with his right hand. He's digging his right elbow into his side because he doesn't like getting hit on the side by Ayala's left hook there. There it is again. And of course, what he's doing that, Marvin, he's leaving his head open. There you go. Definitely, he shouldn't have been dropping that left hand down there. He's got to stay in a little tighter to Tony. Or either stay further away from him. Rick Jordan, the referee, split them up. And that takes care of round four. Some hitting after the bell. Ayala hit Cheatham a moment after the bell, and Cheatham came back with a one-two, and then Ayala hit him again. You know, I am told by Ray Arcel, who has the years to show it, since he goes back to the time of Benny Leonard. Leonard told him the hook to the liver is the most, most is the toughest punch now what he does with that right hand is that's the punch he gets off with he uses the right hand to get off but watch the left it's jars look at how he loads up with that left and bing right in there to the kidney and then he'll get him to the liver you hurt a guy badly i know a fellow named hagler who's got a bad habit of doing that <laughs> marvin there is a chance to ask you uh, do you feel any special tension uh, working here at ringside? I know it's not as dangerous. Well, I tell you, it's a lot of fun, though, working with a great bunch of guys like yourself, still learning and everything. This is a great education for me to be right up front watching great fighters like this, Tony Yellow fighting uh, uh, Jerry uh, Chatham. This is round five, scheduled for ten. We have had no cuts in this fight, neither fighter down. There was a trickle of blood coming out of Cheatham's mouth in the previous round, but that has stopped also. Another left hook by Ayala to the head. I think you will see a big difference in this fight right now. What happened at the end of that incident, the last round. Both fighters are getting meaner now. Ayala's right cross really tagged Keaton in that last exchange. Now a one-two, a left-right combination by uh, Ayala. Ayala now just pushing Keaton away, and you can sense he's taking over now. Keaton back to the rope, taking a lot of leather here in round five. Left hook by Ayala caught Cheatham on the side of the face and he holds on and Cheatham is cut over the right eyebrow. Ayala looks like he was angered by that extracurricular hitting at the end of the previous round. The right round. You know what this is like watching the movie Raging Bull? Looks the same way, doesn't he? Matter of fact, Teddy Brenner, the former matchmaker of Madison Square Garden, says Ayala looks like the second coming of Jake LaMotta. Right hand by Ayala. And now Cheatham has really slowed down, Marvin. I believe what Tony Yellow's got to do is just put his punches together, more quicker punches, and forget about the power, and he'll get this guy right out of there. Under him. Cheatham trying to work closer here in round five. Takes a right and then a left by Ayala. Lead right by Ayala. El Torito unloads with the left hook. If you notice right now, you see Jerry Chatham not moving very much on his legs. He's trying to bang with a puncher, and that's a, that's a bad mistake in there. Ayala dipping away and then countering with a left hook. Another left hand and a right cross by Ayala. He's put in together now. The crowd is starting to cheer louder and louder for Ayala. Six busloads of fans drove the 200 miles here from San Antonio to watch their pride. With punches that a lot of people are not watching now, watch Tony Aguilar with them short uppercuts in the inside. Those are the ones that's really taking their toes on this guy. A right and then a left by Ayala. Another right by Ayala, and he's starting now to dig in. Now, do you know how you can tell that Cheatham is tired? When he started the fight, his left hand was up high. His arm is getting so tired now that, look, he drops it, the right lead, and then the bang with the left hook hurts him. Ooh, another one. Another left hook by Ayala. 
Only one man has gone the distance with uh, Tony as we now come to the end of round five. That was Mike Baker last November. Ayala's uh, only decision among his uh, 11 straight wins. So far here in Houston, as you look at Sugar Ray Leonard in his dressing room, Tony Ayala Jr. is pitching a shutout against Jerry Cheatham. I hadn't been aware of why the crowd was cheering, and then I saw the gal in the ring. That's Ayala's right hand. He has a tendency sometimes to drop his head when he throws the right hand, and maybe a counter right would do it to him. But, see, when he hits the guy as flush as he did that time, it's very, very tough for Cheatham. Oh, look at those shots he's hitting him with. Marvin, were you that good a fighter after 11 fights? No kidding. Oh, I tell you, you know, this man is tremendous at 11 fights. You know, his age, that's what you have to look at. This is round six, scheduled for 10. Jerry Cheatham has a cut above his right eyebrow. Ayala doesn't have the reach, Marvin, uh, to fight stand-up guys, but Cheatham is coming in low, and he's a perfect target for him. Well, I tell you, like I was telling you, this Cheatham is very game, and he's been taking some of the best shots from Ayala now. And I think if a couple more rounds that uh, this guy, uh, Chatham, he might start saying, hey, don't even hit me with his best shot. I can hang in there for the rest of the round. In other words, go for broke. Might as well. Meanwhile, the fact remains that Cheatham has done very little offensively against Tony Ayala. Now Ayala's got him pinned in his own corner. Cheatham not showing an inclination to slide out of there. No, I, what I see is that both fighters respect each other in there right now. And uh, they're not making too many mistakes right now. The pace is slowing down a little bit. And Tony Ayala is really just starting to pick his punches now instead of just throwing them. Ayala going downstairs as well as upstairs. Cheatham's cut, not a factor so far, but he just took a left-right combination. Cheatham working the body, takes a left hook, and his left leg wobbles. Cheatham's left leg wobbles, now he takes a right hand. Ayala with another right and a left, and the left hook sends him down. Cheatham is on his back. The referee, Chris Jordan, is counting. The count is six, seven, eight. Up at eight, Cheatham is now trying to shake the cobwebs from his head. He's bleeding from the mouth, and it's all over. Tony Ayala Jr. has knocked him out in the sixth round. Rodney is going to go up there to talk to Tony, and Rodney, you, Marvin, and I just said here, you get a chance to talk to the winner. Incidentally, coming up, Pepino Cuevas against Jorgen Hansen, while uh, Sal goes up and gets his equipment for the interview if we get a chance for a replay we'll show it to you here it is you notice the minute that cheatham got aggressive with him ayala took it to him and in a marvelous display of counter punching what the cheatham threw the left hook for him and you see how he got beat with the other left hook exactly when he went out there trying to fight this guy he left himself wide open all right your winner I'm still undefeated, El Carino. Victor tells you more than I can. He didn't stop a little bit, even when the guy was down. He just took him, bang, bang, bang. Marvin, I'm telling you, no kidding, this kid in two years might give you a pretty good cut group in your uh, championship. As long as they bring their money with them. That's all you care about, right? That's all. Now, uh, is Sal up there with uh, Tony? I think he is. We're getting Tony Ayala to come over and talk with Sal Marciano, who is waiting for him. Sal, making his way up the steps, give you a blow-by-blow blow of a man making his way up the steps. There's Sal up there. As you look now at Sugar Ray Leonard, completely relaxed. Salvatore, it's all yours. Well, we're here at ringside with uh, Tony Ayala Jr. and, of course, his father and Lou Duba. Tony, congratulations on your win. Thank you. It's just, you know, I came out trying to box a little bit more, and uh, it paid off. Now, uh, we noticed that the guy certainly could take a punch and didn't look like he wanted to elude you at all. He seemed to be a pretty good target for your work. Yeah, uh, I guess he could uh, 
He thought maybe my weakness was my own way of fighting, you know. Maybe fighting with me would be a way to beat me. So uh, he found out that I could box and I could, took care of him. Lou, what's your evaluation of his work? Well, I'll tell you, uh, everybody was expecting him to go out there and punch like a, or say like a bull. But his father and I, we talked about it. We said, let him do a little boxing. Let him do a boxing, wear him down, go to the body, go up and down, and go up the middle. They thought he was going to start coming out with those outside punches, and we went right up the middle with that jab and with that right hand. Let's bring uh, Tony Sr. in here. Tony, I saw you just kissed your son. I know you're very proud, and uh, he, he showed a lot of patience tonight. Well, he's development of a 10-round fighter, and I don't want people or anybody to get the idea that he's just a slugger. We discussed a fight plan, and we went on it and by, by, to the team. He boxed, he was slipping punches, he did something that nobody has seen Torito done as a pro. And that's what he's going to be start doing. He, he just don't only fight one way. He's a thinking fighter. That's what we want. We're going to take a look at some of your work. Uh, Marvin Hagler is with us at ringside, the uh, middleweight champion. And he was uh, remarking about your ability to show everything because, as your father said, you did everything tonight. Here's uh, some action. There you are unloading the left hook. We noticed uh, two rounds before the knockdown, around the sixth round. There you tagged him with the left hook. The body work is what uh, paid off because he wasn't liking that. No, he wasn't. Uh, he took good shot to the head, so I thought I might, you know, have to weaken him a little bit. And uh, it paid off while I worked the body a little bit and then came up to my head, to his head. Tony, at this point, you won't be 19 until next February. Uh, do you really believe in your heart what everybody's saying, that you will be the champion before you're 19? I believe I am. I believe I will be the world. Do you know what I'm by the time I'm 19 years old? Well, let me speak to the two men at your right. Uh, first of all, Tony Sr., who do you want next? Well, it's up to my partner and I. That we don't ever discuss who our next opponent is. We sit down, we discuss, we view films, and this is the way it's supposed to be done. This is a business, not just, a, just not an event. It just, it's a business, really what it is. Your opinion, Luke? Well, uh, we're, looking, we're looking at, you know, tonight you've got the champions on here. You've got the Quavers, you've got Hanson, you've got Leonard, you've got Hearns, uh, uh, you've got Kaloui. We're ready. We're ready for any of these here. It's just a matter of Tony putting it together. And strangely enough, he started the show with tonight with his boxing ability. Not only is he a good puncher, but now you're, he's gonna, we're going to show the boxing crowd that he's also a good, uh, he's also a good boxer. Well, Tony Ayala Jr., 12-0, 11 knockouts. Certainly exciting boxing fans around the country with his boxing and power ability. Yes, Tony. I would just like to say hi to my people in San Antonio and also the people in Phoenix who won this fight. Thanks. And all the people who drove up from San Antonio. Okay, let's go back to Bill Mazur at ringside. Gracias, Sal.